What's your tree? Um, and so before I give a formal intro for Julia, I'd like to go ahead and thank our event sponsors. Um, this uh, Julia's visit would not have been possible without the UWL Green Fund, uh, Women's uh, Studies Student Association, Departments of Women's Gender and Sexuality Studies, Environmental Studies, Geography and Earth Science, Sociology, Archaeology, Political Science, Public Administration, and Cooley Partners for Sustainability. <laughs> Julia Butterfly Hill is an activist, a writer, an educator, and a poet. Uh, she brought global attention to the plight of the world's last remaining ancient forests when she climbed 180 feet into the branches of a 1,000-year-old redwood tree for 738 days as part of a tree sit, a nonviolent method of civil disobedience that involves perching high in a tree in order to protect it and the surrounding trees from logging. <clears throat> as an anti-war activist, Hill sh helped shut down San Francisco's financial district before the invasion of Iraq in 2003. She was arrested and forcibly deported from Ecuador in July 2002 due to her solidarity activism on behalf of the indigenous population displaced by the nation's oil development. Hill is the youngest person ever elected to the Ecology Hall of Fame and was named by John F. Kennedy Jr. in George Magazine as one of the 20 most influential women in politics. She's addressed the United Nations, lobbied Congress, and has continued to stand on the front lines of environmental and social justice issues around the world. And with that, please join me in welcoming Julia Hill. Thank you. Thanks to everyone who, um, oh, that's loud. Do we have a way? Thank you. <laughs> Thanks to everyone who uh, helped make it possible for me to be here, including your fabulous work. And we give her a huge round of applause. She was the first one who reached out to me and said, hey, just wondering, would you be willing and interested to come? So she was the, the seed that, that got planted to make this happen. And, and a lot of effort goes into us being able to be here together this afternoon. So I'm really grateful to everyone who helped make that happen. I have this this calling in me that for our time today it's going to be more interactive so I hope you're ready for that and when I said that some people's heads went oh <laughs> um, I really as you can tell by now at this point I don't write speeches that's not how I work there's nothing wrong with that but it's just not what works for me what works for me is that I really try to do my best to create an experience in part because growing up I was talked at to a lot, <laughs> and it really didn't work so well for me. I didn't like feeling like I was being talked at to. Um, that I, I loved the experiences that I had where I felt like I was being communicated with, and <clears throat> I really want that to be our collective experience. And I feel like for an afternoon time, why not? It's like, what else we got to do for the next hour together, right? Why not uh, have a conversation together? So I could talk about a lot of different things, and I, and I will. The, the topic is, what's your tree? And I will tell you a little bit about where that name <laughs> came to for me, but then I'd actually really love to just engage you very quickly into the dialogue, into the conversation. And part of the reason why that's important to me, I, I tell people every time I talk it, that I actually deeply, deeply value your time. Even if you are here for extra credit or required credit, which I know some of you are. I, <clears throat> that I, I still see time as a, as a very sacred gift and a sacred investment. We only have this moment, this moment, this moment. Every moment of every day, we're investing our life into something. And you actually invested your life to be here this afternoon. And I deeply value that for whatever reason brings you in here. So my hope and my goal is that the investment of your time this afternoon will actually serve you in your life and hopefully, what I'm committed to also serve you in making a positive difference in the world, whatever that is for you. <clears throat> so I hope that you are ready to engage in more of a dialogue, conversation format, versus coming in here to hear the expert lecture at you while you take notes, and then have time for your Q&A, and then go about your life. <laughs> and although there's nothing wrong with that, 
again, it's just, it, it's not a format that really has me come alive, and I would hope that our time together here is one that enlivens us versus one that puts us to sleep. Are you all okay with that? Oh, yeah. Yay! <laughs> there was more head saying yes than I thought. I thought I was going to have to be like, come on, y'all, we can do it. But you're all like, yeah, that's cool. So very good. Thank you. Okay, so this idea of what's your tree, it came to me because so many people were coming up to me and saying, thank you, Julia, for doing that action. I never could have done that. For you who might not be aware, it was mentioned, but you know, I'll, re I'll restate it. I lived in an over 1,000-year-old ancient redwood tree for 738 days without touching the ground to protect that tree, the grove around it, and to call attention to what is happening to not only our redwoods, but our old growth forest around the world, and to try and highlight how what we do to the earth, we do to ourselves. And that a forest issue, issue is not just a forestry issue. It actually impacts the quality of life for people today and for future generations. So that's the action I did. So this idea of what your tree came about because the amount of people who've come up to me since doing that action who said, thank you for doing that, I never could have done that. And I've always responded from the very beginning, well, neither could have I. On December 10th, 1997, when I was standing at the base of this over 1,000-year-old redwood tree that was marked to be cut down, and I was looking up so high I couldn't see the top, <clears throat> and I was get preparing to climb, if you had told me what was about to happen in my life, I would have laughed, then I would have screamed, and then I would have run back down the mountain. I would have been like, no, nope, that's not me. That's an interesting thing, but that's not me. I didn't know myself to be the person who became the longest tree sit in recorded history. I also didn't know myself to be the person who would come here and talk with all of you. It's actually harder for me to do talks than it was for me to live in a tree for two years. <laughs> because it's funny, people like know me as this public figure, and so they just think I'm fine with being public. But I remind people, I lived in a tree <laughs> by myself for two years. It is an introvert that does that. It is not somebody who wants to be on stage and be like, look at me, look at me. Like an extrovert would have maybe lasted two months because they're like, get me out of here. Part of the reason I could live by myself for two years is I'm like, yay, I'm not to talk to nobody, I can just hang by myself, it's great. And if, when I did have to talk to people, I could talk to you over the phone, I didn't have to look at you, because looking at you freaks me out. So, <laughs> it's true, it's funny, but it's true. So in many ways, like doing this kind of work is harder for me than being the girl who lived in a tree for two years. And I came up with this idea of what is a tree, because what I found in my life is that our mind will oftentimes stop us from what is actually possible for us to do in our lives. <clears throat> because if, I, if you had asked me, could I do what I have done, not only in the tree but since coming down, I would have said no. I would have said no, I can't do that. <clears throat> not only did I live in a tree for over two years without touching the ground, I went through the worst winter in recorded history of California. I went through a company trying, literally trying to kill me. I went through having to bear witness to a place that I loved being destroyed. And I couldn't go out to eat or go out to a movie or go party with friends to help <coughs> shut myself down from witnessing a very beautiful place being destroyed, a place we'll never get back. <clears throat> I couldn't shut down that. I just had to stay there 738 days, 24 hours in a day, 60 minutes in an hour, 60 seconds in a minute. Like, it was a day-by-day-by-day by day by day thing. And I, who I knew myself to be then, would have said what I've been through, and not only what I've been through, but what I survived through, and what I eventually thrived through, that that was not possible for me. And that being the person who gets up in front of you and shares from my heart and clearly, I'm just like, hey, this is who I am, hope you like it, if not, that's cool. Like, this, all of this is really a calling for me that has me be bigger than I know myself to be. It calls me to be bigger than I know myself to be. And that's what what's your tree means. It's not a literal thing, although it could be. Right? It's not like is your tree an oak or a maple or an elm or a redwood. 